All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast. Once again, everybody, PayPal and Patreon links are both down below for anybody who wants to support me, only do so if you actually can. So as the warmer months of the year are coming, it is now time to uh, resume talking about the drought and ever uh, diminishing water levels in the western and southwestern U.S., even if it received enough precipitation to uh, make it go white on the map to uh, remove the currently in drought status. That would not replenish the uh, hundreds of feet, uh, you know, 50 plus percent of uh, water volumes that uh, the various uh, large reservoirs out there have lost over the course of the last uh, two or two and a half decades. The western and southwestern U.S. Uh, effectively depleting their large use water supply has uh, been a pretty obvious uh, foregone conclusion for quite some time. And we are now at the point where uh, that is only a few years away. So looking at the various water sources, uh, starting with the two big ones along the Colorado River, Lake Mead and Lake Powell. Despite uh, their appearance, Lake Mead does not just provide water to uh, the Las Vegas area, and Lake Powell does not just supply water to the middle of nowhere. They are excess reservoirs uh, meant to release extra water when uh, the flow rate of the Colorado River would otherwise not be sufficient enough, which for all intents and purposes, in present day has become all the time. So they are constantly releasing water to make sure that uh, the flow rate of the Colorado maintains the desirable level. A uh, desirable level for what, you may ask? Well, uh, for many things. For Lake Powell, it's a uh, desirable level to keep Lake Mead from dropping too quickly. And for both of them, it's a desirable level uh, to make sure that the agriculture being conducted in the middle of a desert in Arizona and uh, and Nevada as well uh, can uh, keep getting the excessive amounts of water it needs because it's being conducted in the middle of a desert, as well as a huge chunk of it uh, to get siphoned off by the Colorado Aqueduct pipeline over over to Southern California. That's right, a huge chunk of uh, Southern California's water supply, especially the LA area, uh, gets its water by uh, sticking a, you know, 300 mile long straw over into the Colorado River. And also on a final bit uh, to make sure there is enough for the roughly 4 million or so people uh, down in that region of Mexico that uh, get their water supply from that river as well. So how are Lake Mead and Lake Powell doing? Uh, well, if you've uh, been watching these updates long enough, you will know uh, they're not doing all that great. Uh, Lake Powell is now under 25% of its uh, capacity. It's down to 24%. Having over the last uh, several weeks uh, lost another six feet of water level or so uh, in elevation feet, as that's how the uh, U.S. Uh, lake system measures the uh, height of the uh, water surface above sea level. In elevation feet, it has dropped from 3,530 over the last uh, over the last couple weeks down to uh, 3,524, which, as I said, has it down to only 24% full, uh, which may look deceiving because if you look at the maximum depth, it'll show you uh, that it uh, if full it would be at 3,700 feet, and if empty, it would be uh, all the way down at 3,200. Remember that. Uh, remember the deepest part of the reservoir is that narrow canyon right behind the dam. A narrow canyon or channel like runs along the uh, reservoir and however that very deep canyon channel section is only a few hundred feet wide, the bulk of the water volume is in uh, the, you could call them fans or arms or wings or whatever of the reservoir that uh, you can see that that are like dozens of miles wide and those fans or arm sections, extensions of the reservoir uh, tend to only be a couple hundred feet deep. So thusly now, Lake Powell is down to only 24% full. Lake Mead, the gigantic one uh, down next to Las Vegas, had dropped down to about uh, 1,067 elevation feet in terms of its water level, and it's uh, stayed pretty flat there for the last number of months as it normally would, although actually normally it would regain a uh, water level, except uh, it really didn't regain all that much this time. So it's uh, now entered the uh, phase of the year where it starts losing water level and has uh, already over the last uh, very short period of time, just a couple or a few weeks, dropped down to 1,063.5 elevation feet, which now has it uh, dropped from 34% full down to under 33%. 
roughly, with roughly every 3 feet of water level being about 1% uh, of its volume capacity. So if it continues the uh, pattern of water level loss uh, this year that it's uh, been seen usually each year except for high precipitation years, then it likely stands to lose uh, probably another 5% of its water volume. And if you hear noises in the background, those are coming from outside, I have no control over that, I'm sorry. Also, if you uh, think that high precipitation uh, might suddenly refill it, I uh, have some bad news for you. You see, there were decent uh, precipitation years, uh, decent uh, low drought years, in the very recent past, just a few years ago, as uh, you can see, I'm going to bring them onto visibility on the, uh, the chart, and you will see that uh, even during high precipitation years, it doesn't really uh, refill it by any bit. It just keeps it, like, stable. It, it just keeps it in the same area. Uh, so what about California? California got a, a bunch of rain. Didn't that uh, replenish all of its, uh, all of its water? No, it, it did uh, refill Lake Orville by a good bit, but that was uh, really the only one that got blessed in that way. Uh, Lake Shasta Lake Shasta did uh, regain water level during its replenishment phase of uh, the water year. However, it is approaching uh, the declination phase for this year, and uh, it did not regain all of what it lost. As last year, it dropped from about 980 down to 880 elevation feet, and uh, it did regain about 60. It got back up to uh, where it's leveled off now at about 940, but thusly still coming up 40 feet short of where it uh, started its drop from last year, which has it at a bit under 38% in terms of its uh, total volume. And if it loses a similar amount this year, uh, last year it dropped all the way down to about 22% uh, by the time things stopped. Uh, so this year, that would mean uh, at the end of its drop, it would probably end up in the uh, upper teens and uh, it looks like it's uh, far away from everything however however it is a big chunk of uh, california's water supply as unlike a lot of other places uh it's not location based california's water system uh because of things being distributed disproportionately in california uh is all interconnected and like piped around and stuff as you can see on various uh aqueduct maps now apart from uh lake shasta what are the other big suppliers Lake Orville is one of them, and uh, Lake Orville did actually recover what it lost uh, from last year. Last year it started at uh, about 730 or so elevation feet, and it dropped all the way down to about 630. During the uh, flooding last year and uh, some precipitation in early this year, it did actually manage to get back above 730, uh, up in the uh, 740s at the moment, and is right about at the point uh, where its descent phase for this year will be starting with uh, those elevation levels uh, currently having it at 46% of its uh, volume capacity. And the other member of the uh, big three California reservoirs is Trinity Lake or Lake Trinity. And Lake Trinity regained uh, not, not all that much. Uh, Trinity dropped from 2,280 elevation feet down to 2,220 uh, by the end of its declination phase of last year. And uh, as it's approaching the start of the declination phase of this year, uh, it has regained, it has regained, even with those flooding rains uh, from last year, a grand total of uh, about 10 feet, uh, back up to about 2,230. So uh, Trinity Lake is almost certainly going for a, uh, another precipitous dive this year, and its uh, current elevation water level has it at 33% uh, of its volume capacity. And to round it all off, what about Arizona, aka Phoenix, because Phoenix basically, the Phoenix area basically has the entire population of Arizona. Well, the Phoenix area is supplied by a, a number of different surrounding reservoirs. Uh, their, their water management system uh, measures it as uh, their collective total uh, percentage of uh, water volume. And normally, on decent years, uh, they lose 5 to 10 percent and uh, typically will actually regain uh, that 5 to 10 percent uh, when the Arizona monsoons come. However, uh, despite getting decent rain last year, they did not replenish what they lost. Again, just as with several previous years, as a couple years ago, uh, they were up in the 80s and they dropped down to the lower 70s and uh, then replenished only back up into the upper 70s, and then they dropped down to the very upper 60s. They did replenish back up into the uh, upper 70s in percentage, in a uh, percent full. Then last year they dropped all the way down uh, towards the uh, mid-60s, 
uh, got down to 66 or 65 percent and instead of replenishing back up to the upper 70s uh, they only got back up to 72 percent full and should be approaching uh, the declination phase of the year now and so that's it for this one uh, thank you everybody for sticking around and listening like if you enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already there's tons of other episodes about all kinds of stuff uh, for you to listen to or watch if you want paypal and patreon are both down below if you want to support me just only just so if you actually can if you want to help me out for free you can subscribe to my cat she has uh, obviously less depressing stuff on her channel Plus, if she gets up to a thousand subs, then her channel can start getting ad revenue as well. But that's it for this time. So may God bless and protect you all, and I will see you all around next time.